Hello everyone, Bradley here, and welcome back into a brand new Civilization 6 tutorial. Today, 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 we are going to be talking about trade routes, the most exciting thing to do a tutorial on. Honestly, I am really excited for this tutorial. A lot of research went into it. I'm really happy with what we came up with. Just a reminder, though, before we get into this tutorial, that we stream Civilization VI on Deity live all the time at twitch.tv slash vanbradley. That link is in the description below. If you do enjoy this tutorial and find it helpful, hit that like button so more people can uh, find the tutorial and also find it helpful. And if you click that subscribe button, you will be notified just right on your YouTube homepage. Maybe you get a phone notification. I don't know how you have it set up, but you will at some point be told when more tutorials uh, come out and when more Civ content is released. So if you would like that, hit that subscribe button. What are you even just click it right now? All right, let's talk about trade routes. Trade routes in Civilization VI are how the game kind of realizes trading in real life. Obviously, trading in real life, much more complicated, but in Civilization VI, you can use trade routes to trade either within your own empire, think of it like trading between Kentucky and California if you're in the United States, or trading to other civilizations or city-states. Uh, think of it like trading from Kentucky to Vancouver, Canada where I live, that's a foreign trade, that's international, that crosses a border, right? And you can use these trade routes, either domestic or foreign, to acquire yields that'll help your empire. Sometimes they give you food, production, or gold. Those are the main ones. Sometimes they give you science, culture, faith. There's just so much you can do with them. So let's hop into the game and talk about them. The first thing we are going to take a look at is some of the important information in the game that the game will tell you about your trade routes. The first is if you take a look at the top, not really the top left, but kind of in the center bar of all this information, this little circle here made up, it looks kind of like a recycling symbol, but it will tell you how many trade routes you have active, so that's two on the left hand side, and what your trade route capacity is, right? So if you have two on the left and four, on the right, you know that you can build two more trade routes. So just some basic information. How many trade routes do you have? And how many trade routes can you have if you want to have that many? The next thing, as always with civilization, is there is a hub of information. So if you come over to the, the top right bar here and click the trade route overview, it is gonna give you a lot of information about your trade routes. In this case, um, I have one from El Havoyes to uh, whatever this says, um, but I am getting one production, three gold, one science, one faith, yada, yada, yada. Same down here from El Havoyas to Madrid. We have one or one food, two production, three gold. We don't need to spend too much time on this screen. Just know that it exists. If you ever want to know anything about your trade routes, just click this. Bam! Information. Awesome. To establish a trader, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a trader unit, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you need one trader unit. You need an origin city. Where do you want that trade route to start? Which city do you want the trader unit to leave from on its new trade route? And a valid destination city. Where do you want the trader to go? You can also take your trader and kind of teleport it around your city centers, kind of like great people. That way you can change the origin city of the trade route via the trader unit. If it's in one city and you want to move it to another one, you can just teleport it using the panel in the bottom right. I'm sure we'll explore that in game as we go along here. But just know that if you build a trader in a city, it's not locked to that city forever. You can teleport it around to any city you would like in your empire to be an origin city for that trade route. Your first opportunity to build or purchase a trader and construct your first trade route will be once you have researched the foreign trade civic, which you can find by just clicking this little purple square here, opening the civic tree, and down here on the bottom is foreign trade. And if you'd like to boost foreign trade to get your first trader unit a little bit quicker, you can go here and you can find a second continent and there you are we have boosted foreign trade once foreign trade is researched you will have the ability to create a trade row but you still have to either purchase or build the trader it doesn't come with a free trader just the ability or the capacity for one trade row in order to send a trade route, all you are going to have to do is click on a trader that can go on a trade route. Achen will be our origin city. You can select anything on the left here as a destination city. It'll tell you the yields you will receive on a per turn basis for sending that trade route. So if I send it up to Ma up here, we have, what will that give us? 
one food, two production per turn, which is exciting, you know? But if I send it to seven brothers or Jelenus up here, I'll get five gold per turn and one faith per turn. So this is just how this screen works. Your origin city is just where the trader currently is. All of the trade routes that you can reach will be on the left and you can pick the one you would like to go with. It is good to know here that you cannot change the actual tiles the trader walks on. So if I wanna to go to Taruga here, this is the only path to Taruga. I can't ask the trader to like go around these mountains or do something weird. Just understand that if it happens in your game and the trader is taking some weird stupid path, it happens all the time. There's just nothing you can do to change it. So it's fine. Once you have selected your city over here, wherever you want it to go, you can just click, oh, that's the repeat route. Um, we had a trade route to Seven Brothers, so I can just repeat that route. If I wanted to go somewhere else though, I just click Mohenjo Daro, for instance. It'll show me where the path down there is and you can just click begin route. In order to send a trade route, you will have to have obviously discovered the city you would like to trade with. So we have discovered Nagaz Garmu down here and Bandar Brunei up here. You obviously must not be at war with the city-state or with the civilization you would like to trade with. So if you're going to trade with somebody, don't go to war with them. That part's pretty obvious. You are also going to need to have a clear pathway to them. Right, so there's any fog of war blocking the path the trader wants to take to these cities, the path will be highlighted in white, then you cannot make a trade route with them. It has to be a clear path. Sometimes for whatever reason, uh, it's due to diplomatic visibility or spies or a variety of different reasons. You might be able to see a city center kind of in the middle of nowhere, right? But there's fog of war completely surrounding it. No matter what you do, you will not be able to trade with them. You actually have to scout out the fog of war to create a path for the trader to take to the place you would like to trade with. And the last thing is the trade route needs to be in range, right? So if I click the trader here, it'll show me all the trade routes I have that are within range. Currently, we don't have any that are out of range, but sometimes you'll see a city over here and you're gonna wanna trade with it. There's no um, fog of war blocking it. There's no reason you can't make the trade route other than it's probably not in range. Your initial trade range is 15 tiles, which means if you click your trader here, it'll only be able to go 15 tiles to another city for a trade route. This gets extended once you have trading posts established in your cities. The initial trade route range for your traders is going to be 15 tiles. So if I click this trader here, it's showing me all the available trade routes within 15 tiles. Once a trade route is complete, it creates what's called a trading post in both the origin city, in this case Kyoto, and the destination city, in this case it'll be Buda. So if I send this trader off to Buda, we will begin our trade route. Oh, we boosted currency, awesome. This trader is gonna go, we'll talk about trade route mechanics in a minute, but once it goes to Buda, it comes back, all of the trader is complete, it's done, it's dusted. A trading post will be established in Kyoto, and a trading post will be established in Buda. What the trading post does is it extends the range by a further 15 tiles. So if I wanna trade with a city over here, obviously that's farther than 15 tiles away from Kyoto, but because there will be a trading post in Buda, the trader is gonna to go to Buda, it's gonna hit the trading post there, and then it's gonna extend the range, allowing me to trade with a city that's farther away. Obviously hard to visualize when there's fog of war, but just bear with me here. It's kind of the best example I can give at the moment. So you're at the, by the time the game ends, by the time you're at the end game, you're gonna notice that your traders can go pretty much across the whole map. And that's because most of the cities have trading posts. So it'll come through Fukuoka, which will have a trading post, and then Dabuda, which will have a trading post. And it keeps extending the range by 15 tiles, allowing you to trade farther and farther and farther into the map. Now, early on in the game, there are a few reasons you might wanna send a trader up from one place to another, and let's talk about them for a minute. The first thing, obviously, that's important with trade routes is the yields you get, right? So right now, I have four options, right? If I send it from Kyoto to Fukuoka, I'm gonna get one food and one production in Kyoto. So Kyoto is going to grow a little bit quicker, and it's going to produce a little bit faster. So that's not too bad. If I go to either Buda, Nagaz Garmu, or Bandu, Bandar Brunei, it does not matter where I go, I will get three gold. That is good information knowing that these, in terms of the yields I'm gonna get, are all equal. Okay, so sometimes you wanna pick your trade routes based on yield. If this was three for Nagaz Garmu, three for Bandar Brunei, and eight for Buda, 
obviously the eight gold per turn is so much better that you probably just send it to Buddha. The next thing you might want to consider is the roads. So this white pathway here that the trader is showing you will actually turn into a road and will allow your units to move faster along it, right? So if I would like to go to war with Buddha early on in the game, for instance, and I have this trader that's making a road between not only from Kyoto to Buddha, but through my other city, I can build units in either of these cities and have them follow this road right up to Buddha. And so if you're thinking about going to war or you're thinking about moving your units in a certain direction of the map, um, picking your trade route based on the road it creates might be helpful for you. The next thing you might want to consider is that sending trade routes to your AI opponents makes them happier with you. So if you're on deity, you're on a higher difficulty, and you want someone, you want your next door neighbor, like Genghis Khan, to be happier with you, good luck. But you can try sending a trade route. If you go and click on the AI that's next to you, and you go to this little heart button here, it'll tell you all the reasons they're happy with you, all the reasons you, they don't like you. But if you say, if you go to here, it says, to raise your relationship, you could offer a favorable trade, establish a trade route is the one we're going to look at here. Um, open borders. There's other things you can do to make them happy, but trade routes are one of them, right? So let's take a look at the things that make them happy. If I go here and I select Buddha, not only am I getting the three gold, I'm getting a good road that I might want. Now, hey, if I know I want to settle some cities up here, that road up here to Bandar Brunei might be helpful for getting my settler up here quicker to each their own. I'm just telling you the roads exist so you can make your own choices about them. But now that I've sent that trade route to, uh, to well, yeah, to Buddha, sorry. I've sent the trade route to Buddha. <laughs> I almost got Matthias's name confused for Buddha for a second. That was a mess, but now we're here. We've sent the trade route to Buddha and to Matthias. One is the city and one is the person. Uh, but plus two, they're happier with us now because there is trade routes between our nations. So those are kind of some of the reasons you might want to select your trade routes in the early game. Good roads, good diplomatic uh, possibilities with the AI opponents that are next to you. Good yields. Another thing to consider too is some city states will give you an envoy if you send them a trade route. You can check if they will or not by clicking this quest button and it'll give you their quest. This one is train a galley, but it might say send a trade route to that city state, which might incentivize you to send a trade route to a city state instead of to your neighbor. So there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of reasons you might want to send your early trade routes around the map to different locations right keep all of that in mind and just have fun and play the game make your own choices i'm not here to tell you how to play i'm just here to tell you how trade routes work but it is good to know kind of all of those factors together are kind of how you should think about trade routes in the early game when you first start creating your trade routes they have a minimum length of 21 turns before the trade route is complete. So that's the uh, that's the least amount of time your trade route can go for. So once you send a trader off into the world, it will not stop that trade route for 21 turns at a minimum. It may take longer, but the minimum is 21 turns and they will move at one tile per turn. So every turn that goes by, your trader is gonna move one tile towards the destination city. Practically what this means is your trader is going to move at one tile per turn until it makes a round trip between the destination city and the origin city. And it has to be at least 21 turns, right? So if I go down here and I go from Kyoto to Nazgarmu, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiles. So it's gonna make its first round, it's gonna head up here and that's gonna be eight, right? And then it's gonna come back and that's gonna be 16. But 16 is not 21, so it's gonna have to go back to Nazg Nagasgarmu. Right, what are we at now? 24, we're at 24 turns, and then it's gonna have to come back to Kyoto because it has to make a round trip. So even though this trade route is quite short and quite close, that's gonna be 32 turns because that's the last round trip after the minimum of 21. If I went from Kyoto to Fukuoka, 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 I don't know how to say it. Anyways, this is seven tiles away. So it's gonna go seven, it's gonna go 14 to come back, but it's gotta hit 21. So it's gonna go up for seven. Now it's at 21, which is exciting, but it's gotta come back and finish the round trip. So this one here would be 28 
turn. So I hope you understand kind of how the math adds up. The trade route needs to go for at least 21 turns. And then after that 21, it finishes once the round trip is complete, but it always needs to come back to the origin city. It'll never finish at the destination city. For Buddha, this is around 12 tiles away, could be 13 depending on how you count it, but it's gonna go to Buddha, that'll be 12 turns, it's gonna come back, that'll be 24 turns, and so it's only gonna make one round trip. So even though this trade route is much farther away, right, it's actually gonna take less time to complete the route than going to either Fukuoka or to Nagasgarmu, which doesn't really sound like it makes sense, but that is how the trade routes are counted. Minimum of 21 turns, and it has to finish on a round trip. So it has to finish in the origin city. As you get later into the game, the minimum distance your trade route takes to finish goes up from 21. So we just talked about how 21 was the minimum. Once you hit the medieval era, the 21 minimum goes up to 31. So it needs to take at least 31 turns. Once you hit the industrial era, not area, the industrial era will take 41 turns as a minimum. And in the information era, and beyond, it'll be 51. So it makes it harder to create trading posts the later you get in the game because the trade routes have to take longer. Once you have research celestial navigation, which is right here, allows traders to embark, you can start making sea trade routes. So far, we've only talked about land trade routes. Sea trade routes happened once you've researched celestial navigation. And you have two cities, an origin city and a destination city that are both connected to the ocean here. So right here we have a city, uh, Brad Sausages. <laughs> Sorry, don't mind the Twitch name of the city. Come and hang out live on Twitch, it's a good time. We name cities dumb things. All right, so we have a sea city here and a sea city here. The city can either be coastal, so it has kind of like a port entrance from the water, or it can have a harbor. So if Berlin is kind of tucked in here, but it has a harbor, that is the same, but the origin city and the destination city need to be connected to the sea. If Berlin is here, and the trade route starts in Brad Sausages, goes over the water, but connects to a land city, that's not quite the same as a sea trade route. With your sea trade routes, origin and destination city connected via water, right? Um, I tried to find an example with an international city, but I just don't usually play on continents or, or a map that really allows for that too much. But the, the main difference between them is traveling over the water is going to give you a little extra gold, which is great. But the main difference is sea trade routes, their minimum range is 30 tiles, right? So if you're connecting a city that is coastal to another city that is coastal or has a harbor, then you can, uh, your initial range will be 30 tiles away instead of the 15 we talked about. So it's just good to keep in mind that you will have a higher ability. Let's say we find Dido has a city over here somewhere. That's gonna be within 30 tiles if she has a harbor or a coastal city I can connect to. At this point, it's probably good to know that you cannot have duplicate trade routes. So if you go to your trade route overview, you will see that I have a trade route from Cologne to Kumbi Soleil, which is just right over here. There's our little trader doing his little adventuring. If I click on another trader in Cologne, I cannot send it to Kumbi Soleil because that's an exact duplicate. I could go from Dortmund to Kumbi Soleil or from Ulm to Kumbi Soleil. So I can trade with the same city multiple times, but you can't have an exact duplicate. Either the origin or the destination needs to be different. Now that we've talked about kind of the basics of trade routes and how they work and how they function in the game, you might be asking yourself, hey, how do I even get more of these things? We start out with one. I have one trader. How do I acquire more trader capacity so I can send more traders? Let's dive in and show you. In game, the best way to acquire trade route capacity, not the only way, there are some great people that'll give you extra trade routes. There are other ways to acquire extra trade routes. Some government uh, world Congress things will give you extra trade routes, but the main way, not the only way, before you type in the comments, not the only way, but the main way you will acquire more trade routes is through markets or lighthouses. Markets are buildings right here. We are producing a market that you can build in a commercial hub. So once you slap a commercial hub down, you can build a market and this market will give you a trade route. If we go to the production and we go to the market, it says plus one trade route capacity. If this city does not have a lighthouse building, that leads me right to my next point. In cities with harbors, yoink, 
you can build a lighthouse building in the harbor. We don't have a completed harbor yet. Once you have a harbor, similarly with the market, you needed a commercial hub. You can slap a lighthouse in that harbor and it gives you plus one trade route capacity. It is important to note that these do not overlap. Right, so if each city has either a market or a lighthouse, each city will also contribute a trade route capacity. Right, so after this market is done, we will have three trade route capacity instead of two. Now, it is important to know that while the market in this city increases the trade route capacity, I can send that trade route from anywhere. Trade route capacity applies to your entire empire. So if I build a market in Hamburger, and I build a trader, I can build that trader in Brad Sausages or in Augsburg, or I could purchase it in Atchin and move it to Dortmund, right? So the capacity applies to your whole empire, even if it comes from a specific city. Quick note as well, if your market is on like a floodplains and the flood takes out your market, you will lose the trade route capacity until you fix that. You gotta fix it. If a flood comes, if raw waves and stuff or floods and stuff if it takes out your market fix the market man get that trade route back that was passionate i'm sorry now the next question that you might have now that you understand how trade routes work and how to get lots of them is how do i make them better how do i get the most out of my trade routes i'm looking at these yields and they suck man they're terrible i want more than this to be coming back from my trade route. How do I make these routes better? I'm glad you asked the question. There are like an infinity amount of ways. So many ways this tutorial would be 120 hours long if I went over all of them. So just know that you will be leaving this video having to search for all the many ways to make your trade routes better. Also know that if you know a way to make your trade routes better, Type it in the comments. Just do it. If I don't mention it here, type it in the comments. I'm not going to mention most of them. What I would recommend, though, is just be on the lookout. The obvious thing that's going to happen is as you send trade routes, right? As you send trade routes, your cities will create trading posts in the origin city and the destination city. Those trading posts apply plus one gold to your... I think it's plus one. I'm 99% sure. Don't quote me on that. I think it's plus one, right? If we look at the right side over here, it says trading post created. Completing a trade route has created a trading post for you in the city of Seven Brothers. So now if I go back to Seven Brothers, there will be more gold there than the last time I sent the trade route because now there is a trading post there, right? So that's one of the ways and that happens pretty naturally as you go through the game. You're sending out trade routes, you're creating trading posts. The next time you go to your trade route screen, you'll just see that there's more gold there. You won't really think about it too much. That's awesome. I'm going to encourage you to just be on the lookout for all the variety of ways. All right, if I go to our policy cards up here, where's the government? There we are. I'm gonna unlock it just for this example, right? The surely, here it is, Cavanasseries, plus two gold from all trade routes. Putting that card in will increase the amount of yields you'll get from your trade routes. Plus one culture and plus one science from international trade routes. Put that in, that'll increase the yields you get from your trade routes. Alliances, I don't have an example here because this game doesn't have, I haven't researched alliances yet, but alliances also increase your trade routes. If you have a research alliance with someone, you will get more science from trading with them. If you have a cultural alliance with someone, you will get more culture from trading with them, etc., etc. Those are some of the main ways trading posts, alliances, and policy cards. All right, democracy is also one of them that people like to use. I like to abuse democracy on science games, but if you go to democracy, your trade routes to an ally city provide plus four food and plus four production to both cities, right? So that's an example. If you're just on the lookout, if you just read what the game is telling you as you hover over things, you will slowly start to accumulate the knowledge of all the different ways to increase the quality of the yields you are getting from your trade routes. There are an infinity amount that I did not mention most of them, but I hope you have like a rough understanding generally of some of the main ones and also how to find in the game where the rest of them are that you can use to make your trade routes better.
The next thing I wanna show you is how your trade route yields work. So right now I'm in action, I have this trade route. I would like to send it to seven brothers for the plus two science and plus one culture. Once we do that, you are going to see it applied to the top here and you might think it's being applied to your entire empire, but it's actually being applied to the city. So if we go here and we check out the science, it is 27.5 science in action. Let's send that trade route to seven brothers for the plus two science. Bada bing, bada boom. We go back to action. It is now 29.8. So that extra science, it appears up in the left that it's getting applied to the empire, which it is. Your empire is getting an extra two science per turn but it's actually coming from the city of Achen. This is important because if you're playing someone like Maya, who gives bonus yields for cities that are within six tiles of her capital, for instance, if you are playing Maya and you send a trade route from a city that's getting a bonus, right? Let's say the bonus is 10%. Right, you send a, a trade route to Taruga. Taruga gives you 10 gold, but because you're Maya and your city gives you an extra 10% yield, right? You will actually get another gold because it's coming from a city that has a boost. I don't know if that really makes sense, right? That's a bit of an advanced way to look at it, but if you're not understanding the Maya example, it doesn't really matter as long as you know that the trade route is applying the yield to the origin city even if it appears like it's going towards the whole empire at the top, it's just good to know that it's actually being accounted for in the origin city. When you send your trade routes into the map to do your bidding and bring you thy yields that you desire, they go undefended. So if I send a trade route out to Fukuoka right now, I'm not worried about this scout because this archer can take care of it, but it's good to know that this barbarian, right, can plunder my trade route before it's complete, thus denying me of the trader unit I have to rebuild, denying me the trading post that's not going to exist, right, not finishing the road, stopping the yield, it's just a mess! You don't want your traders to get plundered. So barbarians can plunder your trade routes, uh, units from uh, places you are at war with can plunder your trade routes, free city units, can plunder your trade routes as well. So just be cautious that if there, if you want to go to Bandar Brunei and there's like a barbarian encampment right here, just know that it's probably going to get intercepted, right? Let's say you want to trade with like Dido, who's way over here, but you're at war with Brazil in the middle. If you send a trade route through Brazil to Dido, Brazil's just gonna plunder it. Terrible example with the fog of war, but I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. So just follow the white line if you ever feel like there's barbarians along the way or like a city you're at war with along the way or any way this is gonna get plundered, you probably don't wanna send the trade route. Likewise, if you are at war with someone, in this case, we are at war with Tamaris. Here is one of her trade routes. If I throw a unit on top of that trade route, I can click plunder the trade route and that trade route is gone. We received 180 gold, but that is what that looks like to plunder trade routes. That's what will happen to you if you do not defend your trade routes against enemies. It is important to know if you would like to plunder trade routes on the ocean, you will need to use a boat to do it. You cannot like teach a crossbowman to swim and have him going around plundering sea trade routes. So if the trader is on the ocean, you'll need a boat to plunder it. If the trader is on land, you'll need a land unit to plunder it. Although if you can teach your aircraft carrier to walk and plunder trade routes, then feel free to DM me that and I'll look at it and laugh a lot. Voila, we are finished. You can now go into your own Civ games with hopefully a better understanding or a better knowledge of how trade routes work. In terms of practical advice, I really try not to tell people how to play Civ. I'd rather teach you how trade routes work, how you can use them, some of their abilities, and then you can go and enjoy the game and learn and figure out your own way to play. Typically speaking though, as someone who plays on Deity and watches a lot of streams and YouTube videos on Civilization VI, I would recommend international trade routes over domestic trade routes almost every time. There are exceptions, but if you're learning the game, I recommend send your traders out internationally. Not only will it give you the best yields, uh, usually, but It'll also keep your opponents happier with you, which stops them from coming to kill you all the time, which is really, really nice. So I recommend international trade routes over domestic trade routes almost every time if you're learning. Otherwise, go hop into a Civ game, have fun, use your trade routes, 
get your gold, defend them from barbarians, whatever you gotta do. That was the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Also, give me tutorial ideas. People comment all kinds of things, but I need to know what you guys wanna see. I'll make a tutorial on anything. Well, not anything, but like most things, if you put it in the comments, hit the like and subscribe button. Come and join us on the live stream, twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun in your Civ games, and we'll see you next time.